Hello and welcome, my name is Luke from Behind the Scene and today I am chatting with Mother Junks, also known as Joel, of Brisbane's own pirate meddlers, Lagerstein. How are you, Joel? I'm fantastic. Uh, thank you for chatting. How did you get that one? Uh, you know, like a pirate name, it just kind of comes to you like a, like a gift from above, really. And when I first, oh, so long ago now, in 2010, got hit up to be a part of the then forming Lagerstein, I turned up to the first practice and they'd already decided that was my name. Oh. Apparently, it means um, the cheapest alcohol in the fridge. Not in the <laughs> fridge, sorry, on the, on the shelf. Because when I was a teenager, I had a very healthy goon habit. Oh, like beautiful. Like all Australian students, I think. Yes. Yeah. So, um, but, you know, this is what they tell me it means. But I haven't actually, and I think I probably researched it more than others. I haven't been able to find the answer it's, but that's just me now Mother it's, it's like a ghost ship in the in the wind you don't know it came exactly yeah that's it <laughs> <laughs> it's me, yeah. so just want to say quick congratulations on the recently announced album 25 7 thanks you got a brand new single video and single out for dig berry drink with pre-orders for the album available now album will be sliding into port on friday the 23rd of august 2019 and it's via kegstand records so that's all the little details. Um, yes, so, we're super excited to be bringing new yeah. music to everybody. Yes. It's been a really long project since uh, the second album. Like, we basically started working on the music straight away. And uh, it, it's just so exciting to see something that goes from an idea in your head and then gets laid down in the studio. And now it's almost to that point where we can share it with everyone and they can start enjoying it. That's super exciting. And so what's the, the writing process for you guys? Is it like a group effort or is one person more responsible for the musical side while someone else is more responsible for the lyrics? It's uh, it's mostly a group effort. The, the Majestic Beast, our guitar player and myself, we create most of the bases of the songs that are on this record. And the lyrics, it's like, because every Lagerstein album is a concept album, and the songs string together and there's all the skits in between and everything that we as a group really debated and and creatively played around with a lot of ideas and came up with the lyrics together i think that the one of the things i like to always say about lago sign is that it is a big collaboration project and that everyone's piece of magic is really in there that i don't think any one person could create the music we create it has a piece of everyone yeah it's like a it's it's, it's exactly like a uh, like a crew on a ship. Everyone needs to do their little yeah, piece. Exactly. Keeps the keeps the ship Very afloat. <laughs> <laughs> and um you guys are currently on your endless rum tour across Europe. Um Yes we are. How excited are you guys to play overseas and, and how does it feel? Uh it's just so much fun to be over here. I feel like uh this is just our second home. We're sitting in Hungary right now as I talk to you. Um, and it's just awesome. The, the scene here in Europe is just incredible, especially their festivals and just the support that heavy metal has. Australia has a lot of very dedicated heavy metal fans, but Europe really is the heart of the genre, I I think. And, um, it's also just one of my favorite things about being over here is the way that heavy music and music in general, it's this just kind of universal thing that you can come to another country and you can't speak the language and you can't communicate with these people, but you almost have this shared culture and understanding where you, you love these bands. Yeah, man, I, I love Slayer. You love Slayer. Like we kind of get each other instantly, even though we're from the opposite hemispheres of the earth. And yeah, it's just a pleasure to be able to come and perform our songs and see people enjoying them and and see more and more people turning up with the merch and knowing the lyrics and wanting to just be a part of the Lager crew. It's really a joy. Yeah, I was going to say, is there a a big difference between Australian and European crowds? Are they, you know, obviously you guys are playing festivals, so they're they're a larger audience, but is there any, any difference between the crowds? I think that... uh there is a difference it also europe though is a very big place i think that you could probably talk about more differences between different countries in europe and their crowds like uh, in my experience the slavic countries like poland and czech republic and um, slovakia they really go crazy those guys absolutely love dancing like and moshing like they just go nuts from the first note 
Whereas maybe as you get up to Sweden or to Switzerland or something, they're a little bit more serious there. And like to just watch and really like you see them smiling, but they're a little bit more hesitant to go crazy. Yeah. I yep. think that the Aussies, um, well, uh, you know, our Australian fans, the Lager crew there, they're just so passionate about the music. And we know so many of them personally, having done the country so many times that there's not this aspect of having to convince them in the same way that we are here, especially when we're playing festivals to a lot of new people. So I think that Australia, in some ways, you can rock up there on stage and you just know, like, this is going to be a party compared to it's a little bit like, I wonder how this kind of people at this kind of festival, because we're always the odd band out. Yep. We're sometimes playing with heaps of black metal bands or heaps of folk bands that are more about paganism or something. And it's always this feeling of like, how will they take to the music but uh the shows so far have just been absolutely amazing we had a count going where we basically have had encore chance for every show so i think that's by that metric we're uh making people happy yeah and that's the that's the main thing for for music makers is just you want to make the crowds happy and have a good time and that's that's awesome to hear that you guys are killing it over there as well it's um i, I understand what you're saying you've got to kind of got to kind of prove yourself to a new audience because they're going to be like well, these pirate dudes are playing music like what is this all about especially in those more serious countries they're going to be a bit more not judgmental but they, they are judging you they're like how do these guys stack up to our guys kind of thing there's a bit of that sort of friendly rivalry i guess and um it, it's uh, yeah so it's, and everyone i think a big part of coming to festivals is to check out new bands yes but yeah. there's always yeah that sense that i'm not your fan yet yeah, you're going to win me thing. over. Win me over. It's, it's the powers up that we have to win them over. We always want to be the most entertaining band of the day. That's awesome. Yeah, I, like I said, it's, I'm so happy that you guys are, are killing it over there. It's um, it's a big jump to make um, to go all the way over there to play shows. And like you're saying, you're playing shows in English, and English over there is a, a second language to a majority of the people that are there. So it's awesome that you can get the, the fun and the joy across that language barrier as well. Exactly. Music is universal. That's it. And um, so I heard you guys have launched a treasure hunt on your, your website. com. If anyone wants to head over there and join the hunt, that's where you'll get your first clue when you sign up. And it, it's a lot of fun actually having treasure out there. Uh, I feel like I have something over the world that we have something hidden and it's definitely findable if you have the pirate's heart and you're willing to really dig through some riddles, then it could be yours, basically. Do you have to think like a pirate to um, to find work out all the clues and, and follow the maps? You have to think like a Lager Sign <laughs> member, I think, <laughs> that clues and the location and everything it it's all about what we have done and what we are all about so i think the more you have followed our journey and followed why we make our music and what kind of music we make these things will be your greatest asset in finding the treasure so do your homework before you go on the um on the treasure hunt that's it <laughs> but i mean it's begun competition there's yeah. a lot of people who are very excited about it and taking part yeah it's definitely um a cool way to to market the new album and and kind of get people engaged even before it drops you know to build that to build that hype up so um props to you guys for doing that that's a really really cool little thing um what was the influence behind the album i, I heard you say it was a concept album as are all your co uh, albums um what was the influence what was the concept behind this album so the story, the album's called Lagerstein. It's called 25-7, but maybe you can read it like Lagerstein 25-7. And really, it's about what does Lagerstein love? We love partying. And what would be better than partying all day? It would be partying for 25 hours a day. So <laughs> the album is basically about Captain Gregor leading him, his crew and himself on a journey to steal an hour back from the sun and to make the day longer for partying. So that is Lagerstein 25-7. That's a great concept. That's amazing. <laughs> Thank you. And yeah, basically each song is just part of the quest, part of the journey. 
and there's a lot of fun things that happen along the way. I don't want to give too much away, but yeah, it's all, all basically secret. we're in a race against the sun. We're heading west, trying to gain an extra hour of time. That's awesome. That's so sick. <laughs> and um, <laughs> where did you guys record and who mixed and mastered? So we did the recording at Studio Fredman in Gothenburg in Sweden. This was the very first thing we did. We landed in Gothenburg when we got here in April. And we worked with Frederick Nordstrom, who is an absolute legend. He, um, he well, people probably know his name because he worked with a lot of the early melodic death metal bands that came from Gothenburg and just heaps and heaps of awesome bands with Timmy Borg, Borg here, with Architects, with Bring Me the Horizon, and then with more classic metal bands like Arch Enemy. And we got in touch with him because our friends at Breach of Silence worked with him and brought him to Australia. And he came to one of our gigs. And to be honest, Frederick is, um, I've been listening to that music he made and recorded since I was about 15. So it was absolutely a dream come true to be able to go and spend some time in that studio where he made those albums. It's insane. Like that's such a, and it's such a, uh, a journey as well like how long have you guys been in europe now like you went back in april to to get this album sorted and you guys are still there We've and you've been still... here for 83 days i believe oh my god and uh, as of today how long have you guys got left over there as well um the tour goes until in europe we end on the 30th of september so there's probably about two and a half months left Wow. <laughs> and then um, I'm going to be I'm gonna be running around Europe for six more weeks after that. A few of us are staying to go do some fun things, hang out with some girlfriends, and uh, have a bit of a adventure. But the actual tour, yeah, has about two more months and about, I don't know, 45, 50 shows left. Oh my so God. really, this trip's just ramping up. Yeah, no, definitely. Definitely from the sounds of it. 83 days in and it's just starting to really pick up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, crazy. Um, 80, a lot of beers. <laughs> a lot of beers. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't doubt. It. I remember seeing one of your. Um, how did you guys reference Bundy Rum in a few? Like it, it's just part of your nature. Does that cross over the language barrier? Do they, or they just presume like rum is rum? We tell them about it. Oh, really? Often we've even <laughs> we've had fans bring Bundy Rum to the gigs. In the UK, they have a little bit of Bundy rum. They have the Down Under bars, which are like an Aussie-themed bar there. Yep. You can get some Bundy rum there. There's not so much here. We we get brought a lot of rum, actually. So we've been trying all sorts of rum. But really, Lager Sign is just, it's all us. And we basically just sing about us and sing about pirates and adventures. And it just makes always sense to sing about who we are as people and what we're interested in. And Bundy rum being one of those things one of the cornerstones and who made the cover art for the album uh the cover art was made by a dude called uh justine I'm, I'm trying to think of his last name sorry justine shout out to you but he actually is he's a filipino artist he worked on our second artwork as well for all for rum and rum for all and it's just no, yeah, he's an immensely talented <laughs> dude and um is just a weapon of an artist so it was an obvious choice to go back for him for the third album because uh, just of the quality of his work and also real chill guy to work with. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's definitely cool when you meet people in the industry that you're happy to work with and that are easy to work with. That's a, that's like a, a golden golden ticket to continue using them. So it's awesome that you guys have gone back to yeah, him exactly. to get the get the third album cover done. Um, can you run us through the history of Lagerstein? So Lagerstein, we formed in 2010 with a really simple goal that we wanted to do beer bongs on stage. Um, <laughs> Lagerstein, it's this funny thing. I could show you a heap of the different albums that we made before and while Lagerstein was like a proto band and all of us were really involved in the old Brisbane symphonic death metal, black metal scene. And we were doing those bands and we loved that music, but there was this sense where we just weren't able to have that fun on stage that we loved having after the gig. So Lagerstein was basically born out of that, that we wanted to make something where we could really be ourselves and have that just monstrous fun on stage uh, and have a party. 
but Lager Sign, it's really, it, it grows as we grow. I was 19 then and I'm 28 now. And it's uh, been quite a journey of hundreds of shows and really thinking about what it is that we want to bring to our fans and what kind of experience we want to shape for people. So I think Lager Sign always started with this desire to have fun and create fun for people. But I think what we're doing now with the Pirates and with the whole Lager Sign world and these stories we're telling about our crew, that was just a very natural process of um, of being us. We're, we're really silly guys. And to just keep pushing that fun level higher and higher, we want to make the most fun music possible that is also witty and clever and well-written and easily easy to dance and sing that's so cool and you guys have nailed that like crowd enjoyment and um interaction i've seen from um some of the the videos of your shows is like next level and you guys are just out there to have a good time and party which is really um something that like you were saying is uh an odd thing to have sometimes with some genres of metal it's um it's always very serious dark themes but you guys have sort of turned everything on its head and are really just trying to have fun. So it, it's awesome to see that you guys are, are sort of breaking loose, but also, you know, having fun with it at the same time. That's it. And, and I sometimes think if you were to listen to some of those old bands, that you can hear a little bit of their music inside of our music, Yeah. but that it just has a different direction that it's it pointed at. Metal, it's all about extremes, and our extreme is extreme fun. That's so cool. That's so that's so awesome. Um, who were the founding members? <laughs> uh, it was myself and the Majestic Beast and Neil Rummy Rackers. They're brothers, those two. They're our guitarists. And they formed the band and then hit up uh, just a couple of guys from the scene and then myself as well. And we went from there from the very first jam. The three of us have been doing Lager Sign, done every gig. It's... um. It's been a hell of a journey. It's been pretty much my whole adult life from teenager to now. So I feel like Lager Sign just is us. And and what was your first show? I uh, it was. Are you from Are you from Brizzy? No, no, I'm from Sydney. True. Okay. Well, we have a promoter in Brizzy called Mousy. Shout out to Mousy. He's an absolute legend. He does Medal of Honor there. And Medal of Honor is like this mainstay in the Brizzy scene. It's just always been there. I think he's doing maybe his like 12th year of it now. Oh and God. our very first show was from Mousy, like pretty much every band in Brisbane who he gives their very first gig to. He'll take a chance on anyone. And Mousy is, he loves us now. He comes to every gig. Um, he, But yeah, our first show was at the Step In at Medal of Honor. Absolute chaos. I played it pretty much naked in a beer cart and killed <laughs> Um it was Lager Sign from the beginning. <laughs> oh, that's, yeah, no, you guys have um, stuck to your guns over the years for sure. That's what I'm saying though. Lager Sign really, there's no guns to stick to because all we put into our music is exactly who we are. Yeah. So it's, uh, it's perfectly natural. We love having fun. We love being silly. We love real serious music too, but we love taking the piss of ourselves and the piss of these ideas. Yeah, and just sharing that passion for music and for smiling with people. So it's really it's easy. And um, what was your favorite venue that you guys have played over the years? If you can pick one, I think that my hmm, my favorite venue I think is probably the Trifford in Brisbane. I'm not sure if you've been there, but it's an aircraft hangar that's been converted into a venue. And we've held two of our Lager Fests there, and it really is just, the sound there is mint. It sounds flawless. It's really nice, has great backstage, awesome viewing. It's just such a good venue. And I'm really pleased to say that we're heading back there for our Brizzy show, for our album launch tour in November. Amazing. That uh, it's going to be a damn cool show. It's a really, really sick venue. If you haven't been, or anyone listening who hasn't been, go to a show at the Trifford. You will not be disappointed. Yeah, I've been to, um, I really haven't only been to Brisbane once for a show. I, I hit up East Brisbane Bowls Club, which is like a smallish venue. I still haven't been to the original Crowbar, unfortunately, and um, and the Trifford yeah, as well. Crowbar's fun as well. Yeah. Spent way too many 
wrestlers and way too many drunken nights there. <laughs> and um, and some awesome, awesome times. Hey, look, they're always awesome times. That's the that's the key. You got to try and keep it as fun as possible. Um, what's your favorite show that you, or tour that you guys have played? It can be national or international. Ah, uh, they're so much fun, man. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, I don't know. I felt an especially great electricity at the show we did in Brisbane in April for our Beer Right Back tour just before we left. we uh, It was our first time selling out a venue in uh, Brisbane. It was the Woolly Mammoth, which is really, really solid venue to sell out. And there was just this feeling of playing to our hometown, playing to all of our fans who have become our friends who have been there for so many years. And just we played a sick show. It was really on point. Everything was great. That one, it's just where you come off stage and you feel this electricity shooting through your body that that sticks out to me recently but you know we love what we do every show is just i feel awesome when i come off stage and that, that, that what's the saying is that um you never work a day in your life if you do something that you love so you guys are yep. <laughs> definitely doing it right um living the dream how did you guys get the name Lagerstein? uh i think it was actually a tenacious d moment with um Neil Rummy Rackers and the Majestic Beast. This is what they tell me, at least. I wasn't in the room. But they say, one said Lager and the other said Stein. And they went, oh, my God. And uh, the rest is history. <laughs> and what drew you to this style of music? So and you were saying you were more involved in melodic... Like, uh, it was like these symphonic death metal, black metal bands. Yeah, so but that's what I was looking for. <laughs> style of music? Lager has a really eclectic mix of people. Um, and it always has with everyone who's been in the band. We always listen to folk metal, to a lot of party music. That's what I mean. It's like there was this very natural part of us that we felt wasn't happening with these other bands. So that's how Lager Sign started to create. It wasn't even about pirates when it started, just to create this really fun music that was like some of the bands we were really into at the time, like Corporate Clarny, like Insiferum, these just bands that you can dance to. And, uh, yeah, and we wanted to do beer bongs on stage. That was that was really the founding tenant of Lager Sign. Luke, man, I think I'm going to have to run because I'm getting a call. I feel like I could chat to you all day. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, no problem at all. We'll wrap it up super quickly. Um, you guys are uh, touring in Europe, finishing off touring in Europe, then coming back to Australia, albums dropping, then you're playing shows in Australia as well. Can't wait to see you guys play. It's going to be an awesome time. Um, you guys are on Facebook and all the other social medias. So everybody check them out. Check out Lagerstein and dude, enjoy the rest of your time in Europe and the rest of the shows. And um, yeah, thank you so much for chatting with us. Thank you so much, man. And uh, I'll have a beer for you guys and yeah. everybody listening, come out to the show, say hi to us. Let's have some drinks. Let's do some polka and have a really awesome time. I can't wait to get home and do these shows for everyone. It's awesome. going to be awesome. It's going to be awesome. Thank you so much, man. Have a great night. My pleasure. I'll see you later, eh? Take it easy. See ya.